Okay, hi there. Let's spend a few minutes just thinking synoptically about the possible micro and macro impacts of an increase in the minimum wage. Here's the minimum wage data for the UK showing a you know, gradual increase in minimum wage uh, in the UK, £8.21 now for adult workers. And it's forecast to rise to nearly £9.50 by 2023. Uh, some politicians are aiming for a £10 minimum wage at some point in the next economic cycle. Minimum wage, of course, applies to people who are in the lowest paid occupations in the labour market. This is the data, the most recent information we have on the on the lowest median full-time gross weekly pay in the UK. Florists come lowest, people working as midday crossing patrol occupations, hairdressers, people in dry cleaners, bar staff, all that kind of stuff. Low wage employment. Notice here, this is median gross weekly pay, of course. The median will be below the mean. Okay, so we're really focusing on the, the micro and macro economic effects. In a synoptic question, assess the micro and macro impact of a higher minimum wage. If you go down the micro road, first of all, you're thinking about the effects on individuals, on individual businesses, on markets or sectors. So, for example, you could focus on the impact on labour costs and profits for businesses directly affected. Take an example from the context and show how this might shift their their cost curves and their profitability. Uh, you could use labour market diagrams to show the possible effect on employment if the marginal cost of labour goes up. You could develop the analysis to show the possible effects on demand and revenues and profits for businesses who see their demand go up following an increase in minimum wages. Very good to link a minimum wage micro impact to a market failure. So you could go to the labour market failures and think about the possible impact of a minimum wage on monopsony power. And as I mentioned before, microeconomics is also up thinking about the individual worker. So consider, for example, the work-leisure trade-off, the impact on work incentives or working poverty, which is very topical at the moment, the impact on household debt and exposure to high interest rates and uh, the ability to save out of income. But I say microeconomics is just zooming in, zooming in on on the micro impact on individuals, businesses and markets. When we go to macro, of course, we widen the scope. You cannot go wrong if you go back to your macro objectives. So the possible effect on employment and unemployment, uh, the possible impact on inflationary pressure, both demand pull and cost push. Uh, Consider, for example, the likely effect on business profits and planned investment. Does a minimum wage increase uh, impact positively on labour productivity? Or what about the overall cost and price competitiveness of the UK compared to similar countries? And of course, an increase in the minimum wage could conceivably have a significant effect on, on government finances, on the budget deficit, both in terms of uh, people's claiming welfare but also in terms of what the government has to pay out to its public sector workers, many of whom may be paid at or around the minimum wage. So macro, much, war, much wider scope, and you'd be thinking of bringing in aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve analysis, whereas with the micro aspect, you'd be using cost and revenue curve analysis or labour demand and supply. That's the key distinction to make, and that's the key to doing really well on these questions. But so too is the ability to evaluate. So here are four evaluation points to do with an increase in the minimum wage. First of all, the impact will depend on just how many workers are directly affected. So if we think back to that slide showing the lowest paid workers, let's go back a few slides here. Go back to these workers. You know, they have low pay. Most of these people would be affected, presumably, by a minimum wage of £9 an hour. But how many people actually work in those jobs? Most estimates would think that an increase in minimum wage to, let's say, £9 would probably directly affect between, let's say, one, one and a half million people in the labour market. Around 5% of people in employment. Second evaluation point, the impact depends on how businesses respond. If the, if the minimum wage has gone up, do some firms cut back on non-wage benefits, such as free meals or, or you know, whatever, um, support for young families? Do they increase their spending on training? 
or do they reduce their spending on training? How will smaller businesses cope, adjust with an increase in the pay floor, particularly if they're fairly low profitability businesses? So the impact depends on the how businesses respond to the, the challenge as well as the opportunity of a higher minimum wage. At a macro level, will there be a rise in inflation? So that depends on how significant labour costs are, particularly in an increasingly digital economy where there's less labour for many, many goods and services. Might productivity respond positively to an increase in minimum wage, in which case there might be an aggregate supply effect as well as an aggregate demand effect. Crucially, I think I'd, I really want my students, if they're going to evaluate this properly, not to make automatic assumptions. So challenge assumptions whenever you can. Most questions on the minimum wage, students automatically assume that the demand for labour will fall. This will create significantly higher unemployment and many people will be made worse off. So please don't automatically assume that employment will fall, particularly if you're familiar with the theory of monopsony and the, the impact of a minimum wage on a monopsony employer in the labour market. There are many economists out there who've challenged the idea, the, the assumption, that a minimum wage automatically costs jobs, because the reality is that in many cases it doesn't. But a minimum wage, again, is a classic synoptic topic because it affects both micro and macro and it affects both the demand and the supply side of the economy. So it's a really good one to revise ahead of these papers.